so now we're gonna start with uh, removing and opening the head so to do so gonna have to remove all of these uh, fuel lines uh, gonna have to remove um, the uh, coil packs so um, now we're removing the uh, coil packs to remove coil packs sometime uh, it's a bit difficult because uh, the rubber at the end when it's get old it tends to uh, grip around the spark plug and it gets a bit difficult to take out so what I do is sometimes I use a bit of the uh, flat screwdriver and try to help myself a bit okay so you got to be careful though that uh, you're not gonna tear apart the rubber here okay so that's what you want to do you want to remove all of those normally when you remove those after that you have me I don't have them because uh, I did um, the compression test so I remove all of those and I knew I had to go that way so I didn't put them back together this thing is inside deep down and to remove that you can either use snap rings from within with these uh, two little holes at top the idea is to to free that uh, ring here somehow that grips at the bottom what works good also you, you use one of these little hooks and you just try to grab it and try to you try to pull it uh, toward the other one and you pull at the same time that works good sometimes you don't really need uh, snap rings uh, pliers but also uh, sometimes it's not good enough with one you have to play with the two you can do the way you want it should uh, come out easily so all of those are already removed so now I'm gonna remove the uh, coil packs and put them uh, I try to keep them in the right uh, firing order so I know which one goes where That's it. That's it. Now is the time to remove all of those fuel lines. I want to slack for now all of the nuts on both sides. I'm going to seal both hands of the both the little pipe here and uh, the injectors and the injector rail with some ziplocks and tie wraps once it's all removed. I'm going to keep also all the holes in the proper order they are right now so it's going to be easier to know which one goes where when it's time to reassemble it. So right now it's just to slack those lines. There should be not much fuel in there. Uh, a bit of the leaking gonna have to put that right away
one or two others I'm gonna go on the uh, other side because it's difficult to access it from here. Okay, so uh, now I'm gonna seal the end of them with uh, tie wraps and zip locks and I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's done, once it's done. Basically this is how I do it. I just cut little squares like that, wrap it around, put tie wraps and then tie it up. So, nothing more complicated than that. We're gonna remove these clips. Uh, this one is broken. They're a bit difficult to uh, to take out. It's like you need to pull them back down toward a bit the inside and then you wrap them around. It's like there's a little hook here at the bottom. If you can see it. Cool. So this is uh, the little notch here that locks in the hole that is underneath. There's holes here. You know, holes here. And this is where, uh, can you see the hole? Yeah. So this is where it, uh, these are blocking. So you need to do all of those the same. So you kind of push, uh, pull and pull, rotate it down at the same time until it, it frees. This is what you do with all of them. It's all good. Okay, so uh, we're going to remove this rail now, the whole rail. We got to clean up all the uh, engine block because I'm going to send it to Rebuild. And uh, they have to have it clean because they're going to clean it with different chemical product or whatever. So this is all got to be removed. So to remove this rail here, you got bolts here. You can remove that right away. So these are just regular bolts. I need to slack them for now. These you just pull. These are vacuum holes you just pull upward. You can try to free them from that space here. They obviously come to that uh, Remember, this was for the, uh, the master, ceiling va master cylinder vacuum. So these are now free. Uh, the rail is now just slightly loose. Now we have to also take consideration of that hose that goes all the way up to here. I'm gonna try to remove it from here. So I'm gonna save to open this, uh, save myself to open this other link here. So I need to remove that as well. Now that everything is slack, I'm going to try to remove this uh, hose. I'm going to grab the cobble. Because it's going to be gas a little bit. Should not be any more pressure in it. Because we relieve the fuel pressure by letting the engine burn all of its fuel. But I have to uh, seal these uh, here. I'm not done yet with that, but if you can see the injector hull have been sealed with the Ziploc and tie wraps. So uh, now I'm gonna remove this rail and then I'm gonna seal all of those, same process. And I'm gonna seal also the pump here. Um, these gotta be removed, I remember now. 
These are just little plastic. These were uh, holders for the, uh, um, what do you call this, the um, oxygen sensor connectors. So I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna seal those prior to do anything else. I wanna make sure I'm not bringing any dust in those uh, little holes there. Uh, fuel rail is at an angle, so there's fuel in here a little bit. So the goal is to uh, remove that and let the fuel all drip from the uh, bottom. I also uh, removed the one here that was a uh, clip. This has already been removed. Now let's just remove that. So now just time to uh, seal all of the uh, remaining, which is uh, in fact just the pump and the bottom one. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna remove the head cover. There's no need really to remove the injectors. Uh, there's no need to work on those, and they should come along with uh, the head cover. This is like a plate here, steel plate, the, and there's one bolt in the middle. So this bolt holds the plate and the plate holds both uh, uh, fuel injector over there. We need to remove all these bolts around. There's plenty all around. There's in the middle here. There's some in the back here also. And also we need to remove these long grounds. So in order to do so, I'm gonna have to remove the nut that I put there meanwhile. So I'm gonna have to remove that, take a long socket and uh, remove these uh, now, there's a lot of those there's no need to show you all around I think you can make your way without any glitch around these there's some also around uh, this compartment is where you got the timing chain so there's some here some on the round so you just make your way around and you you will figure it out these uh, don't have to be removed these were uh, put back in place they, they are the one holding the uh, uh, track with all the wiring for the uh, uh, coil, coil packs and injector and grounds that I removed. Okay, you can see the spark plug in the, uh, the spark plug in the holes. Uh, we can normally remove them right away, but there's not really a point to do so. We can do it after we remove the um, cylinder head cover. If you're gonna remove those, you need a, it's a 12 um, sided mm -hmm. socket uh, to go along with those. It's uh, 14 millimeter because they are 12 spike on the spark plug. And when you remove those and with such a socket, you don't have like a rubber grip to pull up the spark plug once you're done. So what I do typically, I put uh, in the hole a magnet and I just pull up the spark plug with the magnet. And when I want to put them back in, I use the magnet to lower them, lower them down. I put a screwdriver here on the side from the hole here, either on the side here or in the in front here, there's a little bit of space and you just pinch the spark plug and you pull up the magnet and then you put your socket in the hole and you just put them back in. So right now I'm gonna do them afterwards. There's no need to do that, uh, as I said, for now. 
Okay, so what I did, first step is to slack all of these three long screws here. Okay, that was the first step. Second is you go on the outside, there's four bolts. One, two, three, four. Then you go all the way on the other side, you do the four on the outside. Then you can do, here's, there's, this is the only place, there's three, there's one on the outside, one on the outside, one in the middle. Then you go on the other side, you do the four, and so on. So you do like outside, 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 you're going like that toward the middle. I slack these three at first because they're a bit uh, uh, out of the ordinary. The, I don't want to have trouble with these, so by slacking them first, it makes it easier. Normally, they stay in the hole. Uh, this is, but sometimes they, they they come along with it, like this one here. So you can see there's a sleeve that stays stuck normally with the uh, slender head cover. Um, the problem you're gonna have now is that once they're all slack, you think they're all slack, but if you forget one or, or two in the area, when you're gonna try to remove and lift up the, uh, the cover, it's gonna remain stuck. You need to go with a screwdriver and uh, pry it. You wanna do something uh, that's less likely to break it. Oh, here on the outside you have a little something. You can try to gently to dry it here then you can use the screws and try to lift it up <coughs> Sometimes they come along with it, which is not helpful. So that's what I have. I have a few of those that are made stuck now. So it's just a matter of finding the one that stays stuck with it. So time to remove the spark plug, they might be not so tight because I just, ah, yeah, they're a bit tight. Just like them all. So the idea is now to remove the spark plug, so we can rotate the engine freely. Oops, sorry, <laughs> that was that plug. Because um, if there's a spark plug in, and uh, it's getting tougher to uh, turn the engine, and there's a chance the engine might kick back up. There's going to be some. Uh, there's there's going to be some uh, compression in the engine, even though it's slow. But when the spark plugs are removed, it makes it easier to. Uh, to remove it. So normally it's a good practice to look at your spark plug when you remove them. It gives you a very good uh, idea of the uh, health condition of your engine. The uh, perfect condition would be a spark plug that is uh, just like a smooth coffee color. Uh, I'll try to show you one. This one is uh, black, uh, but there's oil on it. So black means it was uh, running uh, too rich. But uh, it's not necessarily representative because I have, uh, since the engine was not running for a long time, it was, uh, yeah, this one is black as well. The, um, I had the uh, misfire 
uh, trouble code because of the uh, koi packs. Yeah, they're all they're all black for now. <laughs> but as I said, it was uh, a condition with the with the um, the koi packs that were not fine. They did not run for long, but I guess this is what's going on. Because I looked at them uh, when I did the compression test, and it was I don't remember they were they were black, so I guess they were fine. So maybe if the engine would run, it would uh, burn this uh, dark, because it's not supposed to be uh, that way. So we can check the tree orders since we're there. That's weird. Oh, that's very wrong. There should have been a tree uh, branch on that spark plug. There's only one left. So that's very bad. It means it fell off in the engine. It's supposed to be like that. Tree spoke. So definitely here, three, three of those fell in the engine. You can tell also the middle part, I don't know if you can see it, but the middle part of that is uh, normally it's um, it's a bigger round than that. So they were kind of uh, overdue these spark plugs. So this one, yeah, they're all dark. The, they all got three, I didn't notice the other one, but uh, yeah, here there's uh, one cylinder that uh, is missing two of those. That's it.